осознаются те проблемы, которые могут возникнуть в связи с этим внедрением, могут возникнуть очень некоторые опасности, поэтому это все должно довольно жестко контролировать. Это очевидно, что рыболовство и китобой являются традиционными красками этой культуры. But those pursuits have been undertaken for hundreds of years. But they have not been undertaken with diesel-powered ships and explosive tip tarpons. They have not been undertaken with giant trawl nets. That once in the 1950s, I think early in the 1950s, they overfished herring, and then after that they they learned their lesson and they got, they got more advanced research going on in the country. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what they say. That's how they. Well, тратит на исследование и предположим в 1950 году они довели до истребления сельц и это послужило им уроком уроком и с тех пор они стараются как-то заниматься этим с точки зрения с позиции научного подхода рыболовством и китобоем the problem with that is that that's fine if you regard their fishing waters as just their national property or something like this, and, and they're responsible for just that ecosystem. But as soon as you acknowledge that it, it uh, you know, is, is global heritage and that fishing the whale population there affects the whale population all over the world, then it doesn't work so well as an argument. No, uh, на все воды и отражается в их политика в нашем океане. В 50-х годах у них было зона рыболовства 4 мили. И они начали отражаться все больше и больше границ. И самый последний отражался 200 миль на северной границе. They've run into big conflicts with Great Britain. Over the fishing waters, and they say that. I mean, the Icelanders say Britain now admires us for doing this, and they acknowledge that they should have done it themselves a long time ago because now Scotland has no fishing industry. Великобритания как-то пытается препятствовать э, тому, чтобы они этим занимались, э, и э, они должны были сами давно бы этим заняться, потому что у Шотландии совершенно не развит рыболовный промысел. Ну и еще одно впечатление, которое бы я бы хотел с которым я поделиться. They have no architecture. У них нет никакой архитектуры. It's like a third world country. I've never been in a place. Uh, they, where they paid so little attention to, to such things. And I asked, I asked uh, uh, Robert Bender about it. And his basic response was, uh, well, we rebuild every couple of years. Uh, the old buildings were not worth saving. Um, and it's a city that was founded in the 13th century or something. And I think so. I mean, as a and um, they, there was probably a lot of wood that is gone now. But he said um, that for us, uh, for Iceland, the history is in the land, and and 
not in the buildings or in, in our culture. Poetry is an exception to that. That's story. Um, but uh, I, I've never been in a place where they felt uh, so strongly that they didn't dominate the land, that the land dominated them. I'd like to, uh, if you're in a stuck point, I'd like to hear from some other people that haven't spoken uh, or haven't spoken that would like to speak. me understand a lot of the other things we're talking about is when people spoke to you, they were very direct and they said exactly what was on their mind and if you tried to sidestep things and um, gloss over issues or to try to be uh, diplomatic, they asked you to speak more frankly yourself and uh, confronted you on that. And I think a lot of the problems that we recognize about their country, I think they may be more clear-sighted about them than sometimes we give them credit for because they don't pull any punches with foreigners. I don't think they pull any punches with time. Uh, if I agreed too much with what they were saying, they said, don't agree so much in front of me. I was very surprised. And the light in And um, I had the same uh, reactions with the Icelanders <coughs> I had known earlier. Yes. NATO base. We met some musicians who were playing there that night, the day we were out touring the country at the crater. We ran into a, a band, American band, that was at the base. Uh -huh. we were playing at the base. I, I met some Marines. Uh, well, uh, United States pay uh, 150 uh, million of dollars. There was also a great deal of American assistance in building the geothermal plant. Um, so the geothermal plant is an industrial plant that heats recommends the chemical energy. So my, my point really is that it's still a very young and developing society. And it's very easy to look at it in a simplistic manner, um, that it's, it's very nice and very clean and everything, but 
they really are still developing and have reached some of the stages of problems. Uh, they're very expansionist <coughs> stage of development. And their problems will probably come in the future. <laughs> Вот так, да, 
раз и все. Гораздо быстрее, чем они предлагают. Другой способ. То есть через вот этим ходовым концом вот так, таким таким образом. А поешь веревку и петлю. Чтобы его развязать, его нужно взять за этот конец и вывернуть. Вот так. Иначе очень трудно развязать. Делается это вот так. Вот в это направление выкручивается, и тогда он легко развязывается. Это надо всегда иметь в виду, когда используешь этот узел. But also, if if you need them to come untied, say a storm came and we needed to get the main down. No, и также, кстати, если вам нужно их развязать, положено ближайшее, подближайшее шторм и нужно снять парус. We need to make sure that we could get the knots untied in a hurry. Нам нужно быть быть уверены, что мы могли только на четырех линиях. In general, we make a clean off by going around it once. And making a number of, of figure eights, three or four. This line is too short to do that. And on the four main halyards, we will then do a half hitch. Or a hitch. Now, why? Why is there the difference? The reason, the reason we do this on Tevega is because the forces are so great that these lines will not hold otherwise. However, it is far better off not to have these hitches because they can lock under extreme tension and could be very difficult to undo. It's better not to have this. Right. Yeah. We do it on the main and four halyards because of uh, danger. But... Manila rope, halyards, hemp, halyards. Манильские пеньки, пеньковые, и синтетические есть эти самые пеньковые канаты. And that would swell up with water. And you would be unable to undo the line when it became wet. If there was a hitch, right? If there was a hitch. And that's enough to hold. We are often finding, we are finding many, many, many hitches on lines where there should not be. Only on the major halyards. Okay, and then the hitch, the difference between the hitch. It's taking a... It's taking a... It's taking a... What this accomplishes, the whole reason there is strength, this line is not knotted in any way. When we tie it on a cleat like that, it's because it creates friction against itself, it rubs up against itself. Now this one isn't easy because I don't have enough pressure up here. 
would run around the cleat if I were just to, to give it a little bit of slack like that. And if I were to uh, that, I could easily lose control of it. Right now, I have very little friction helping me hold this line. And if I were to, to take that many wraps off, the, it could easily start to run. And one thing it could do is tow my hands into the, to the block like this and, and crush my fingers in here. And I could also end up dropping the boom or the gaff on people and, and breaking the boat all up and so on. So you always want to keep... Um, and it's it's hard when someone's sweating here. If you have two wraps around it to to take up the line when you sweat. <coughs> Um, so you may need to have perhaps maybe just one turn around the base of the cleat when you're sweating. And you just have to be ready to throw that extra turn on. I guess the basic thing you have to pay attention to is to be able to judge how much strain is on the line. <coughs> and the more strain there is, the more careful you have to be. This is a knot that's designed to stay tied under uh, all kinds of pressure, tremendous loads, and also a knot that can can withstand being made loose and then tied again and loose and tight again. Can take shock. And um, it's generally used to make a loop. If, for instance, if I were to uh, tow a small boat, I'd have the, the line attached to the boat, and then I could throw this loop that I'd make with the bowling around a cleat on a bigger boat and tow it that way. Um, the way it's made... This is the end of the line. So we call the end that's going towards Eliza the working end. And this is the free or the bitter end. Root, the root end. Working end. Working end and root end. Okay. So what you do to make this knot is you loop. The working end under the root. Uh, the under the free end. So it looks a good like way that. to do this. A good way for them to practice this is to have the working end underneath their arm. Now, a lot of times, the easy way to remember this is uh, you've got your free end, we call it the rabbit. Okay, the rabbit comes up out of the hole
runs around the tree, which is the working end. Sees Luda. <laughs> and jumps back in the hole again. <laughs> and this is the completed knot. Now, it's, it's very important when, when you're finishing this knot to remember which end is the working end, and that's the end that will be pulled. So did everybody get it? It's also good. Okay, so it's important on this knot to have the bitter end. It's important to have the bitter end in the center of the knot. You can do it the other way around. <coughs> and end up with the tail on the outside of the knot. If this gets caught on anything, it will capsize the knot. Okay, so to repeat it again, you got your you're working in under your arm, and you take your free end and loop it over the top of the working end. Okay, the rabbit comes up out of the hole, goes around the tree. From okay, so here's the loop. Comes up, goes around. The tree is the working end. So it comes up. Uh, go the other way. Um, and then back down in the hole here. Okay, can anybody tell us? Yes, yes, yes. Can anybody tell us where we have these bones on the boat? Hey, these, these are really Hey. Так а какой у тебя коренной? А какая, ну, верка тебе? Ходовой, который бегает. Ходовой, который у тебя бегает. Потом берешь этот кончик, пошел вот сюда. Вот они будут с какой стороны вставить его. Самое сложное. что здесь тоже нет? Хорошо, насчет того, да. Юра, знаешь, как легко объяснить? У тебя конец должен так пойти, чтобы он с собой сломался. За рубежом написано было. Там частная контора заплатил. Да. Рабы. Он очень грязный целиком. Это то же самое. Делается такая же. Вы делаете петлю. Необходимо вам длины. Также вы входите в эту норку, но этой петлей обходите вот этот конец, который у нас называется коренным. И затягиваете. И получаете вот такое приспособление, которое тоже не затягивается. 
how do you hang? How do you hang some? How do you how do you support with the? You would have to tie another line to the. Yeah, but what's holding it up? A little longer line. Yeah, but Yeah, but No, because you can't. That's a fake bowling. Here. It's called a fake bowling. A bowling on a bike, okay? You start like this. You tie an overhand. Okay? You capsize the overhand. And then you end up. With your ball and with your um, two loops. Okay? More or less. Alright? And that way, I didn't I never passed anything over the ends. So I can I can hang something. So you're tying a bowling but using it not a bitter end but a bite end. Tie an overhand in it. Yeah. Then you take, you take the circle, pass it over, and then you pull. Okay. Then you pull on the one that are going to make the bite tight. Oh, that's neat. I like that. Okay. Alright, this is called a double bowl. Uh, I mean, a bowling on a bite. Okay, and you end up with something that looks like bowling in two loops. Yeah, it's the same thing I saw, but it's a little bit Medicine, huh? Medicine. And then when we're making those calls, it's a mold in here. You never let go of it. Psychiatry. Hold it down here. Oh, it's 
Ваня, ну все, я не надеюсь. Но мне неудобно. Мне привет, привет. Потрогай мое тело. Я знаю, смотри. его кровь горят. Смотри, я надел, надел. Я знаю. Я специально надел, потому что мне неудобно в этой будет. А вы спорите? Не жалко мне. Да. Здравствуйте, да. На ту сторону надо перебросить. Yeah, you wanna flip it over the other side. Вот там боюсь, это на линии.
Повтор. So what do you think? What do I think? Yeah. Is she gonna fly? I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think we're gonna be real careful with this sail from here to New York. <laughs> Все, что можно там? Да нет, смотрите, посмотрите, что там надо сделать. Идем все. Консалтант. Думаю, наверное, будет не обтянуться, они уже друг по другу вас. Сколько там? Четыре? Да. Через что? Спарусь, что бессмысленно. We'll grab the bottom of the sail. We'll pull it. Надо всем встать и подтянуть. Okay, and and then you can take some. Sure. Sure. Yeah, I think we can do it with people. Aren't you guys going to be Это узел дружбы. Impossible. Узел дружбы. Strong as Misha. Hello. 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 Slide these things past you. Sure you are. 
<laughs> we want to. Something got on tight anyway. Yeah, well, we're not accumulating on our commode. Maybe you can explain it. Who is going to bring it? And on that side, for example, I can put it here. Настя, так, веревочка. These are all screwed up, huh?
Watch delivering. Look at this fine assortment of Mexican food here. We've got tacos. We've got this lovely beef surprise over here. Mike's masterful chicken event right over here in this corner. And in that back corner we have the beans extravaganza. It ain't quite Marino's pizza, but it ain't quite Marino's, but 300 miles from Iceland. 300 miles from Iceland. You're in the What do you expect? You guys, the whole thing in there. Uh, what's his name? Let's start out. We gotta start this one in the beginning. This is me, I like it. The Mexican extravaganza. Mexican Jazz Cafe. Mexican Jazz Cafe. Provided by Sea Watch. A public service from Sea Watch. Mariachi band included. One of the participants in the. Thank you. Sea Watch. Thank you very much. It was a long ordeal. Picking through bits of chicken. Yes, it was an ordeal, but it was worth it. Shoot is a good one.
who else lives in the swamp? Well, yeah, actually, Yuri? Andre lives in the swamp. Uh, Andre would attack the farm. Yeah. Our yeah. God, he's a pretty initiative. You know, yeah, he, he, he would attack the farm. Who else? We got Andre, Arkady, Yuri. You got Seth. Seth. You yeah, can't see Yuri. You got Yuri. Uh, uh, <laughs> Greg, no. Greg, Greg ain't going. Greg, no. No, way. Go by no way. Greg will just, uh, you know, slobber in it there. Uh, Seth, Seth, you might be able to talk to Seth into it. Seth yeah, would look at it and then convince someone else to do it. <laughs> Who else? That's it. We got Greg and Andre. No, we got Greg. How's it go? Greg, Do you have any, you have any Steve's clothes in there? And then Andre, <laughs> Seth, and me. That's what was clogging up. I'm, I'm actually surprised Andre didn't go after it. Actually, <laughs> A lot of Greg's clothes were sopping up the moisture back up under that <laughs> shelf. <laughs> oh no! Uh, did you tell him yet? The, <laughs> <laughs> it was bad though, because if anything ever fell out of your bunk or dropped off the hook, <laughs> <laughs> nasty, nasty. Serious, right? <laughs> no, no, he says uh, we should say body and serious. Close here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Mexican counterattack. You want some more rice? Mm. Uh, <laughs> Going quick. That's good. If you have that. Very good. Mm. <laughs> 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 wow. Um, Сгорел дом. Это не все равно, не дай Господь. Поэтому тебе хочется опять бежать куда-нибудь. Обрати внимание, потому что они сейчас собираются и я нашел разные шутки, потому что завтра будет день рождения. Завтра будет день рождения, и там будет масса шуток, и они касаются и ваших коллег. Поэтому ты смотри сам, не приуляпайся. А ты доносчик? Нет, не доносчик. Он предупреждает, ну зачем мне нужны шутки для Эрбета, а не для Сергея. А каюта одна. А, ну, ну, ну. Okay. 
but uh, we got it. Pulled, came in there, pulled the pin, pulled the trigger, and nothing happened. <laughs> so I ran that to the generator and cut the power. So it wasn't no power. Uh, 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 I grabbed the extinguisher and went back to the top. Got the hose, the fire, the whistle uh, guard hose, you know? <laughs> that's what was there, right? So, yeah, you were just listening to the hose. Look at the hose. Can begin? Please. Whisper, quickly. Артем, Артем, передай только печенье с этой штукой. Сладок. Артем. На халяву и винегар свит. Oh yes, what a mess, look at that, what a mess, smear that mess all over. Вот так вот с этого все начинается. Сначала поиграет, потом выпьет. Если это может быть когда нет. Сейчас такие будем писать. So, uh, who's your other helper? Elena. Elena? Miss Elena. 
Are you in the galley to, right now? Oh, yeah. Палата моя, все прекрасно. А? Папа, я вижу, что меня рисовал. Что? Меня рисовал. Вот он я. Аркадий. Аркадий. <laughs> what is what's going on here? This is Al's captain. Uh, Al, the mate's cabin here. What is going on in here, ladies, while he's on watch? <laughs> Turn on my headlights, honey. Well, you see, it's, it's oh, it's, it's his birthday, birthday tomorrow. I get it. Patrice. <laughs> Turn on my headlights, it's honey. Backwards. Been waiting. Oh, no, <laughs> it's so it's long, right. baby. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. Sure. Look at the other one. Uh-huh. That's an interesting little lady there. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. Short she did his bed and sewed the bottom. I like the telephone. The Where's the telephone to? Oh, that's when you open the door. Oh, again. I got, I got, I got, I got. <laughs> you gotta get the full effect. Go outside, we'll bring it up. Okay. Yeah, we'll bring it up. <laughs> All right, because I won't be able to be here when he does. Um, Okay, there we go. This is the toilet special. <laughs> Sanitized for your protection. Let's see what Dennis has. See you see somehow. Sorry. I have protest. It's very dangerous. <laughs> I like Dennis's look on his face. <laughs> He walked in the door at this thing. I think it's got brought the right attention to it. <laughs> you guys have been at sea too long. May, may to give my... Because uh, <laughs> you got to watch at three. <laughs> Where's your jacket, Sergeant? Under here? Uh, it was a joke. Uh oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, well, let's get in here. What, what can we do with that? Dennis, I think, I think you want to in the bathroom. Did <laughs> <laughs> you try this? place where you can get a good horizon.
Well, He's in a safe. Here? The joke's on me. I waited an hour and a half for you, Al, and Sergey's in my bunk. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought it was gonna be the practical joke on you. <laughs> that was too much better. <laughs> did, it, did it come off at the door? Yeah, yeah, it was perfect. It worked perfect. It ripped the nipple off when I opened the door. <laughs> oh, that's this mess. Did Sergey see any of this? Yeah. He was, he, he was frightened. He, he saw something was going in. And he said, "I'm not coming in here." <laughs> Forewarned is forearmed, I say. Where'd they go? Oh, here they are. Oh, where's the pilots? There they are.
about the way that in the United States that many people are working for peace in, in many different ways. People are involved in many different types of peace organizations. And it's important to remember that all of them, virtually all of them, are non-governmental organizations. for a long time, but it's just yeah, now it's becoming in the public eye more and more. And it's just now becoming so it's 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 a and, and I personally feel, and I think most of the people who are, who are on the street feel the same way otherwise they would be here. That, so, really some of the more hopeful and more constructive work that citizens are doing. Well, yeah, I think that the attitude in general in the United States towards the Soviet Union and towards the Soviet people is rapidly changing. To, to learn about the Soviet people, which they haven't always had. It's, a, it's my opinion that it's, it's now becoming more and more prevalent for people to really want to know and be curious about the Soviet people. I think for me, one of the most important things about citizen diplomacy is it's really educational. what we'll do on our tour and what especially the Soviet crew members will do would be really to teach just about everyone that they come in contact with just through first-hand experience. For many of the Americans who you meet in the United States, you'll be the first Soviet person who they've ever met. Just as in many cases we were the first American people that People will be curious. This is a good thing, it's really hopeful. The, the way we've organized the friendship tour is that we've contacted friends that we have or organizations that we know of up and down the eastern seaboard, east coast. The first tour started in Washington, D.C. And it traveled up to New York and ended on New York when we got on the ship and second tour will start up in Maine. You travel back to New York. No. During the first friendship tour, we we made the mistake of being really over ambitious and trying to do too much. So this was pointed out by the crew members that were on it, it was obvious. So, although our schedule is very, very busy, and it will be busy for the week that we're traveling, we have asked the organizers in all the different places to allow more free time. For 
example, in our uh, in our enthusiasm to, to make the most of the visit we had Soviet and American crew members visit schools and places like this, and, and that's been left. That will be less on this. Uh, to try and do what you, what you want to do. So to get back to the way it's been organized is that we contacted either friends, people we knew, or organizations, whether they were environmental organizations or peace organizations or Soviet American organizations. Committees in all the different places during the stop that are organizing each stop in each town. So you all will be staying in people's homes, there's host families. Uh, many of the meals and activities will be communal. But much of your free time in the evenings, for example, will be at the, uh, the family of folks, probably an American and a Soviet at a folks' family. There's a few things I should tell you, just, just so that you understand a little bit about uh, the American culture. Of, that you might find unusual at first or something like that. And what we hope to do is, is get to a, an anchorage around New York to clean the whole boat, to paint the whole boat, to clear customs, to do all the, uh, a lot of the bureaucratic So that when we arrive in New York City on September 3rd, 2 o'clock in the afternoon is when we're supposed to arrive, we hope that customs, everything will already be cleared. So that right away, uh, friends, family, press can come right on board the ship. <laughs> we don't get an early or we're not able to clear customs ahead of time, then we'll have to do it then. So, so our plan is to try and get in a little bit This is a, a very big holiday weekend in the United States. Just like some labor memorials. Labor memorials. So it's, it's, it's Labor Day weekend, which is a holiday of the working people. And it also it also typically signifies the end of the summer vacation. So um, there will be a lot of people around the seaport. Museum. So we're going in New York City to the South Street Seaport Museum, which is the biggest maritime museum in New York City. It's no longer sailing, it's a museum ship. But but from four, but from four in the afternoon till eight in the evening, there's a big party on the way to tree. So there'll be food and drink and music and dancing. And so we don't we don't have to ship after that day. It's not possible for us to stay. So 
and that's where I was planning to go up to Maine, but come back at the end for three days in New York. So there's two stops. It's about a seven-hour drive up to Maine. But then these two towns are pretty close to each other. These two towns are relatively close to each other. So. Maine is a very rural state, a very sound country. United States is pretty much the center of wooden boat building and wooden boat sailing. And this is also the area where Eliza has lived uh, and where Tom Highland is now. What we anticipate is the group might split up. Some will go to Martha's Vineyard. It's an island off the coast of Massachusetts, an island community. It was a center. It's a center of sailing and whaling in the old days. Josh spent summers growing up on work. He spent his summer time. The other half of the group will go to, to Woods Hole, Massachusetts, which is near This is a center for oceanographic study and environmental study. In fact, some of the research that we're doing is for institutions in Woods Hole now. So again, there's many boats here, research vessels, sailing vessels. If any of you have heard of the underwater research vessel, the Alvin, this is where it's uh, uh, This is where it's from. Many of us who sail on a clear water sail to this town very often. And again, there's a local group there interested in sailing and uh, peace issues that will be posted on that. Then we moved to a, a little town in New Jersey just outside of New York City. Tabor, New Jersey. This is where the people I've been calling in to make the phone calls, this is who I'm calling, these people are friends of mine from college, and they're organizing and stop them in their hometown. And then the last three days are in New York City. There's a couple of events scheduled in New York City. There's uh, a send-off dinner, a quiet send-off dinner, not for the public, but just for the crew. A send-off dinner will happen, just like the night before you. September 13th to 3 p.m. from the airport in New York City. <laughs> It's all something to change, remember that. Uh, it's very important. Right, Slava, as an organizer, can't you say it's all subject to change? No plan doesn't win. So this is the plan or the schedule. It will be busy, but it will be busy. And 
we plan to all travel into one bus in one big vehicle. Yeah. The only person I know who can't not go on a tour is Tom because he has a teaching job that he has to get back to. And maybe Alyssa and Emily will have to leave earlier in some if they get restless. But otherwise, if anybody else cannot make it for one reason or another, they should let me know because we really expect most people to be on the tour. But it's not likely. There's a good chance that we'll be on the ship right straight through to New York. Thank you. For example, for example, the American doctor on the first trip is from Maine. Luda to talk when we get off the ship, we'll have to clear the ship of all our stuff. So what I suggest really is that you end up, and we can do most of these details later, but you end up with, say, two bags. One bag is what you need for this week of travel. The other bag are the things you just need to take back to the Soviet Union. And we keep that in a separate compartment. And you, you so the one bag of things you don't need for this week. So that'll be in the bus with you and everything, but separate, you don't get into it every day. And you have one bag you travel with you. But it is important to, uh, let, to uh, let me know individually. For example, Edward reminds me, he says he wants to go to a place now. It just occurs to me, the perfect person in New York City to take him around. Oh my god! Is that a lethal combination? Oh, I don't know. They may never make it. Oh, Pietro. Oh, Pietro. Oh, Pietro. Uh, Pietro works in Bellevue. Pietro's <laughs> house. So, for example, we have a friend who's a nurse. A man who's a nurse in the busiest hospital in New York City. Yeah, the most insane hospital. It's perfect. But you have to realize that I need to know these things, and I'm not in a place where I can get a message. Yeah. 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 Give me the keys to the house and say, okay, have a good time, and I'll see you after work. Well, in New York, uh, New York is a more difficult place to get yourself around because it's uh, <laughs> So in, in New York City, it will be easy to stay with uh, a host or a group, and that's what we suggest. Al, the control of Crocodile Dundee is kind of a survival guide. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have seen it already. Ignore him, ignore him. I don't get it. 
Miss Method is. Uh, in New York, it's just harder to get around. The subways are not easy to understand. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's not easy for me. So, uh, we'll leave with hostess, we'll hostess, but, um, we'll probably will team up with Soviet and an American. Maybe people who have bigger homes, maybe there'll be more than two people. But I, I don't expect anybody will stay uh, in this alone. Unless I had a friend. Mm. Hey, what's your name? Oh, no. Nice. Let me write. I got it. And the last. Okay, so. <coughs> Atonal happy birthday. Everybody sing as crazily as you can. <laughs> Alright? No are singing you? together in key or anything. Are you sorry? This is a tradition from my home. <laughs> it's more difficult than you think. So I think we should all sing just on uh, just sing ha together and see if it sounds bad enough. Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Now we can sing. Happy birthday to you. We have not developed a, a way of governing ourselves um, based on peaceful uh, um, но мы, честно сказать, никак не разработали вот эти вот способами, способы, как управлять самим собой для того, чтобы общаться на каких-то мирных принципах. But I feel instead are out of the goodness of our hearts letting things slide when things bother us. Но я чувствую, что вместо этого If you leave things alone, и я мой личный опыт он мне говорит, что если вы как-то но не решайте какие-то проблемы, не... They eventually build into ill feelings and conflict. А затем они в конце концов потом порождаются все-таки в конфликты, порождают какие-то болезненные чувства. And so, um, Таким образом, I would like to see in the next half of this trip, я бы все-таки во второй части нашего путешествия хотел бы видеть we as a group to try to develop some principles of peace for our own lives on this boat. And develop a way that everyone can agree on those principles. And show and develop a way to show or to teach each other how important it is for the future of the planet that we do this sort of thing, that we do this work, and that it is work. To me, uh, to say I want to be your friend is just not enough. Для меня вот сказать, что я хочу быть твоим другом, это совсем недостаточно. Uh, it requires a lot of work and a lot of effort. Это требует вообще 
большой работы и больших усилий. Um, just a few things that I would like, personally, I would like to see corrected. Ну, вот несколько всего моментов лично я бы, которые хотел бы подкорректировать. Is I, I feel that some people on the crew are still acting selfishly in, in regards to food that's available. Но я чувствую, что некоторые из людей здесь довольно глупо относятся еще к тем продуктам и к той еде, которые у нас находятся здесь в нашем распоряжении. For example, food that is not put out for our consumption by the cooks is, is being found and being eaten. Ну, например, если food is not put out for us. Food that is not put out for us. Ну, например, вот та еда, которая не выкладывается ковками для еды, продукты те, они значит находятся и съедаются. Just last night a few bananas were eaten. Ну, например, вот прошлой ночью несколько бананов съели. And I feel that just because a sign isn't on there saying you cannot eat these, doesn't mean that somebody can go ahead without thinking that maybe they are for breakfast. Ну и я, мне, например, не кажется, что если там не висит знака такого, что это нельзя есть, то значит это можно есть. Может быть, эти вот бананы предназначены для завтрака на утро. I also feel that, um, мне также кажется, что some of the decisions that are being made for us and for the group. Но некоторые решения, которые приняты были для нас, для uh, нашей группы are being made by people who don't necessarily have to carry that responsibility. It's fine for uh, the captain to make decisions that have to do with the, the vessel and, and the sailing of the vessel. But I don't feel that he should be perceived as the father figure where we go and take all our problems and he is the ultimate word in things that don't have to do with with the но running я, of the ship. Но я не думаю, что он, так сказать, вообще должен быть отцом и конечной инстанцией и э, разрешать вообще все сказать, наши вопросы и проблемы. I feel that we should work actively to create я, some sort of system for that. Я думаю, что мы должны, так сказать, активно поработать и создать некоторую систему вот, для разрешения возникающих проблем. Because I feel that the... Excuse me, I just want to interject that I agree completely with what you said. I just want to say that I agree with this last statement very much. I also perceive my role very much as he described. I, I believe that uh, the, the future of the earth... Uh, the future of the earth depends on, on um, a way of developing a non-violent means of uh, conflict resolution. Но мне кажется, что будущее Земли и благополучие планеты зависит от того, как будут разрешаться конфликты. And that development is each and every one person's personal responsibility within themselves. И я думаю, что это и это вот подход к разрешению конфликтов, он зависит от каждого лично, и это должно прежде всего внутри решаться. And that once we develop that, we can yeah. take that teaching to other people. А если мы так сказать поймем это и придем к этому, то тогда мы сможем так сказать и других людей учить и им об этом рассказать. And by being here on this vessel, и this будучи... is a fine opportunity for us to start developing that. И э, вот э, здесь, когда мы находимся сейчас здесь на этом судне, для нас это великолепная возможность начать э, над этим работать. So I would propose a series of, of meetings dealing with the issues of trying to define what peace is, trying to define what non-violence is, where it's appropriate, where it's not, trying to set up means of... And uh, just trying to lay a foundation or a framework that we can then grow with.
I've seen some very beautiful things happening in the first half of this trip that Josh seems to have missed. Ага, ну я также видела очень много прекрасных моментов и прекрасных вещей, которые происходили в первую часть нашего путешествия, но о которых не упомянул Джош. I've been sailing with groups a third of this size of people who have no language barrier and have found more tension. Дело в том, что я, так сказать, находился в подобного рода путешествиях на кораблях с людьми примерно с такой же группой, такого же размера, и там не было никаких языковых барьеров. Тем не менее, там существовало гораздо больше напряжения и меньше сотрудничества, чем, так сказать, я встретил вот здесь. In jobs like working in the galley, or in the attitudes at the dining table, I find we are all working very much together. Мне показалось, что мы работаем в общем довольно сообща вместе. In setting up the the work on deck, bringing down the sails. We are not working in two camps. We are working together. Um, there is not one person on this boat that I have found I dislike through their own actions or through being selfish. No, I have actually not found this on the boat. Ни одного человека, который просто вот работает сам на себя или за себя или который ведет себя глупо. And I think this is something that I really want to say that I'm enjoying this. Что это нечто, и я хочу сказать, что я просто к этому присоединяюсь. I think it's a beautiful thing. Josh is right that we need to do more. Джош, конечно, абсолютно прав, что нам нужно сделать еще больше. But I also think that we get in discovering ourselves. Мы раскрывая, познавая себя. And then. Helping each other out on little things where we don't have to. И помогая друг другу в общем совершенно ну в маленьких вещах. That there has been an awful lot of that, and I'm I'm loving it. No, давай, давай, ну много здесь всего такого происходило, мне все это очень нравится. Мне сейчас сейчас мне надо идти на поводу. I'd like to answer that. I didn't mean to. I did not mean to imply that that I didn't see any of that happening. Ага. Ну я совсем не хотел сказать, что я не видел здесь ничего хорошего. And I agree with everything that Kevin just said. Я полностью согласен со всем тем, что Кевин только что сказал. It's just it's it's important for me for us to take this opportunity to take it beyond. Но для меня очень важно воспользоваться этой возможностью и выйти за рамки всего этого и постараться сделать максимально. So I hope no one takes personal offense to what I said. Yeah, yeah. To say, I hope that no one personally is offended and does not take it on his own account. What I said. I agree. Have been the organizers and have been the established authority figures, the captain, the ship's officers, and so forth. Easy to easy to leave the running of things to the organizers. Значит, это, конечно, было довольно э, проще всего переложить вот это все управление на организаторов э, этого путешествия, и там, капитан, и это, э, они должны упасть. And that there are many things that we can а do for ourselves. А есть еще много вещей, которые можем делать сами. And that we can и teach each other and learn сказать, from each other. Поучить друг друга и научиться. Again, I agree with Josh that this is a tremendous opportunity. To to study how we govern ourselves and how we resolve our conflicts. In a laboratory setting where we're essentially free from external pressures. Other than, of course, the elements of nature. Let's take the responsibility for controlling our lives and developing our program further. Чтобы у нас проходили какие-то небольшие семинары. Established on a, a higher level, a more a more focused level, a level more focused on specific topics. No, которые ну на более высоком уровне и темы, которые были какие-то более специальные. 
And of course, my particular interest. И, конечно, меня особенно интересует. Is in developing ongoing networks between our countries so that we can communicate. Ну, развитие некоторых путей общения между нашими странами. Of people interested in that type of networking activity. To take place approximately one week from today. Had a time to be determined by mutual consent according to our individual schedules. And, and I'd like Quakers to suggest, as Quakers, as Quakers do, do, that before like each seating with the number of people that are here, maybe we could just spontaneously do that um, before the meal. The other request is that I always get a little uncomfortable that um, Americans tend to dominate meetings, I think, and that I wanted to know if there were, if, if anybody from the Soviet Union had some feedback about this. Ну и потом мне как-то, в общем, чувствую себя, может быть, несколько некомфортно и смущенно, что, как правило, американцы доминируют вот на таких вот обсуждениях. Мне бы хотелось знать, что все-таки советские участники думают по этому поводу. Я думаю, что это так и есть. Anyway, he would like to add a few words. His impressions. So my impression is that the ocean is such a small boat. And, and